so the power's been bouncing up and down and we're in the thick of this blizzard right now and it seems like every time there's a good strong puff of wind outside the lights flicker and we lose them for a minute or two and then they come back so I've already gone through the house shut down all my computers but now seems like a particularly good juncture to talk about this contraption that you see in the middle of the picture what this is is something that you can build yourself if you've got the know-how and can do so safely this is an old American power conversion back UPS 280 and like many other UPS's or more correctly in this case a standby power supply since this thing doesn't do anything doesn't actually turn on its inverter and carry the load until the power has gone out anyway what you can do is you can find these things everywhere with dead lead acid batteries in them that's the problem the batteries die they cost almost as much as a new unit and people toss them out you can find them in thrift stores you can find them on the curb people will give them to you I have a bunch of them. I had an old APC Smart UPS 1200 that was a particularly nice example of the species and that was a, ma it was a massive thing and I could have had a 5 kilowatt best power one as well but I didn't know where I was going to put it or what I was going to do with it because those things are huge but that one was particularly nice because it had a true sine wave output and as such it was perfectly okay to use it to run things like electric motors like you might find in washing machines or air conditioners and just as kind of a point of humor, I had it set up on the driveway, and I pushed an air conditioner with it, and I pushed a washing machine. It didn't particularly like it when the washing machine hit the spin cycle, and it wouldn't start the air conditioner, but it would run it. Well, this thing is smaller and uh, much more conservative in its capabilities, but what you can do with an old UPS that still functions but has a dead battery most of the time you can repurpose it with an external battery which is what the clear and blue box right next to this one is supposed to be holding and of course it is right now what's in there is a Napa lawn tractor battery and while a, a better battery for this would be something like a deep cycle rated gel cell or something along those lines the Napa lawn tractor battery has the advantage of being cheap and if we don't discharge it too deeply it won't have any trouble supporting the load and lasting for a long time in fact this one's already about a year old anyway the way that this basically works is I've opened up the UPS and I've located its battery leads which are two female connectors and I drilled two holes in the side of it and ran heavy gauge wire at least as heavy as the internal wire is into a set of uh, male connectors and they're all insulated I joined them together crimped them down so they were nice and tight joined them together insulated them with tape and then I shut the bottom of that thing and never needed to open it again <clears throat> now the UPS is fused inside in case anything goes wrong with it but since we've just done a rather massive expansion and moved its battery outside it's also a very very good idea to fuse it internally as well You'll notice there are two fuse holders here. That's because I installed a panel meter on the front of this that tells us the battery's current voltage, which can be used as a rough guide to its state of charge. So if I turn this on, the display comes up and you can see this battery is being float charged right now at right around 13.26 volts DC. There's a little switch on the side to turn that thing off for when it's not needed. And basically, when this thing needs to go to battery it'll switch over and it can carry a load in the face of a power outage now what I had initially planned to do with this was something along the lines of building a backup lighting system for my basement by using a contactor from a heating system that was normally open that is to say as long as there was no power being applied to it I'm sorry normally closed as long as there was no power being applied to it the contacts were closed together and would allow whatever was attached to them to operate but whenever it was powered they would stay open well that's perfect in the face of a power outage because you lose power to the coil it connects the load to the UPS the UPS switches to its battery and I was going to run a bunch of lights but that brings me to another important point about these things a lot of UPS's do not have a particularly clean high quality output they don't have to because their loads which are typically computer loads don't really care how clean the output is. Really old UPS units like this one typically have a nasty what you'd call a stepped approximation to a sine wave output and even more before that typically have a square wave output. Well that can cause problems 
with simple electric motors. It can cause electric motors to be noisy or overheat. It can cause transformers to overheat and catch fire. And it can cause other problems too. So it's not a good idea to plug just anything into these unless you're sure that it has a true sine wave inverter. And most of them do not because that's expensive to manufacture. It requires a great deal of precision and added components and things like that. But in this case, we're in luck. We can use this to power a light no problem because Compact fluorescent bulbs, by and large, have electronic ballasts in this day and age, and those electronic ballasts are typically nothing more than a type of switch mode power supply. So at least in theory, they won't care how nasty their input is compared to a nice, smooth AC waveform when you're on utility power. Incandescent bulbs might make a little bit of noise and might cause the UPS to overheat, so we won't use those. But a compact fluorescent with a true electronic ballast and not a magnetic one ought to be fine. So in the face of a power outage right now, I've got this little lamp up here turned on. If the power goes out, the UPS will switch to its battery. It'll start pulling off of that, and the light will stay on for quite some time. I have tested this thing, and it will run for several hours, no problem. In fact, I lost interest. I watched a couple of feature movies while this thing was being tested, and it never once lost the plot or faltered in any way. But you can make one of these, too, if you'd like. Now, you just have to keep in mind some safety concerns. First of all, lead-acid batteries have nasty stuff inside them, so you don't want to get that on you. You want to build a container that's appropriate to hold it. This probably isn't the best container you've heard of, but it has one thing going for it. That's the fact that it was cheap. And it's good enough. It is vented. I drilled holes in it. And I'm not too worried about any spark being created by this because I enclosed it and the switch that turns it on and off was also pretty well enclosed. Not all UPSs will charge a battery like this appropriately. Some of them are designed so cheaply that their charger only works properly with the capacity of battery that was provided from the factory. So you may find that it never charges the battery up or it overcharges the battery and tends to dry it out and burn it up. These old back UPS units seem to be pretty good about charging anything but the largest batteries that you can throw at them. So that's pretty much the whole story with this thing. If you're going to make one of your own, focus on safety. Realize that a car battery, even a little lawn tractor battery, contains enough power to pull off at least a couple really impressive spot welds or flesh burns or things like that that you really don't want anything to do with. Use fuses. Don't save money in the wrong place. A fuse is your best friend because if something goes wrong, you won't burn your whole house down. Other than that, a little bit of common sense, a few bucks worth of wire, a container of some sort, and of course the UPS itself will have you well on your way to making a UPS with greatly extended runtime. There is one more thing that bears mentioning before I close this video, and that's the fact that not all UPS units will stand having a larger battery added to them because sometimes the inverter in them is so cheap and nasty that it won't stand to run for any more than a couple minutes. And putting a larger battery on a UPS does not get you a bigger inverter. It won't handle any more load than it did when it was originally manufactured. So be mindful of its load. Don't load it excessively and, and test it. You know, if it seems like it's getting uncomfortably hot or something after several minutes of operation, shut it down and get a different unit. They're so cheap and so common that you can almost certainly find one without too much effort. That's all there is to it. Ah, there go our lights. As you can see, the UPS keeps things going. No problem. Oh, bye-bye lights. Hello lights. Guess it's good I got all the computers shut off.